Hey guys! In today's video, we'll be introducing the concept of selfish genes and selfish genetic elements. To begin, let's review exactly what genes are. Genes are made of DNA segments that, in the simplest cases, code for a particular trait of an organism. Our genomes have well-defined places, called loci, that may be occupied by one of two or more genes, or alleles, with a collection of genes working as a team to generate a complex organism. It was believed that each and every gene is there inside the organism because it helps the organism, and any genes that did not do so would be lost due to natural selection. However, this consensus did not explain the fact that humans possess 30 to 50 times more DNA than needed for protein-coding genes, with these non-coding genes seemingly doing nothing for the benefit of the organism. Richard Dawkins was able to explain this phenomenon through his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene, in which he explained that the behavior of all living things is in service of their genes, and so our genes can be metaphorically understood as selfish. Therefore, while most genes indulge their selfishness by bolstering the rep reproductive success of the host to ensure that their genome is passed on to future generations, some genes exploit the genomic landscape to accomplish their own spread, despite contributing little to nothing to organismal fitness. Unlike previous views of evolution, the further natural selection was honing the behavior of living things to promote the continuance of the entire species, Dawkins argued that the genes themselves were seeking to survive, with their genomes not necessarily coding what is best for the organism, but what can best allow the genes to propagate into future generations. The selfish gene theory has also been called the gene's eye view of evolution, in which the effects of evolution are evaluated through a genetic standpoint and through the impact such changes have on an organism's genomes. This is because Dawkins argued that genes are the primary unit of selection, with organisms simply being the vehicle or means for this process, as they carry this genetic information into future generations. It's important, though, to clarify what selfish exactly means in the case of our genes. Dawkins' book title has stirred controversy for many years, as biologists and readers alike argue that it's not correct to attribute mental abilities to unconscious things by personifying our genomes, and that the metaphor insinuated that our genes, and therefore humans as a whole, are wired to act selfishly. However, Dawkins had clarified in later editions of his books that most genes do not prosper at the expense of their members or of other groups, with natural selection seeing to it that gangs of mutually compatible genes are favored in the presence of each other. Instead, selfishness just metaphorically refers to the fact that genes act for their own survival, and not necessarily for the survival of the organism or species. Yet Dawkins even admitted that naming the book the cooperative or immortal genes would have been a better option, with the latter title upholding his argument that the digital information in a gene is effectively immortal and the primary unit of selection. Interestingly enough, though, recent research has shown that there are some forms of genes that do intentionally work against the best interest of their host, known as selfish genetic elements. Some examples of these genetic elements include meiotic drive genes, transposons, the T-complex in mice, and B-chromosomes in plants, which are all either of negligible benefit to the host or even somewhat detrimental. They nevertheless persist due to their ability to drive their own selection, for example, by outproliferating the host genome or by ensuring that cells failing to contain them are disadvantaged. In this way, these genetic elements are acting selfishly because not only are they pushing their own propagation further, but they're doing it at the expense of their host organism, with evolution selecting for these genetic elements not necessarily because they support the fitness of the organism their species, but because they were able to outcompete their fellow genetic elements. I hope this video helped you to learn more about the selfish gene theory and selfish genetic elements. 